Hey, hey, welcome back to another episode of Opera with a Side of Fries. I am one of your hosts, Oren Gratis, and I am joined, as always, by my colleagues... Frank Bazzilli and Carl Tanner. And today we have another phenomenal guest. I'm really excited that he's here. He's a really good buddy of mine. I've known him for a long time. I guess we're getting old. Uh, one of the great, great, great voices in the world today, and someone... I think this is the first other. This is the other the, the first base that we've had on here besides That's myself right. and Frank. Right. So Carl, you're in the minority today, but let's all welcome yep. Morris Robinson. Morris is really, I mean, he is just he's taken the he has taken the opera world by storm, and he's one of the great bases in the world today, and one of the one of the amazing voices. Those of you who have never heard him sing, go hear him sing. But wait till you hear him speak. If you never heard him speak, right. just I mean, it's going to put us all to shame. So let's say hi to Morris. Welcome, bro. Hey, what's up, man? How y'all doing? Hey, hey, hey. good. I'm, I'm going to have to talk like this now. Oh, no, yeah, no, I was no. going to say, I was gonna say <laughs> I'm going to vote that we, we vote. One of us is going to get voted off today, and, and Morris is joining us for, for You know, yeah, Oren, I, get, you, I get the vote. That introduction from Oren means a lot because Oren remembers we competed against each other when he was in the ACO studio and I was in the Met studio. So, and he always won. I don't know if that's true. No. That's true. He always yeah, those, those those tables have turned. <laughs> Morris went into the big boy repertoire now. I'm still I'm still pining for the days of Mozart well, and stuff uh, like that. You can do all the, you can do everything, man. You know you can. Well, this is yeah. much love back to you. Yeah. So how are you? I mean, you know, you're you're where? You're in Hotlanta. I'm in Tyrone, Georgia, man. I live just south oh, of Atlanta. Just south uh, of Atlanta. In the country. Yeah. I'm at home. At home, just like the rest yeah. of us. And what yeah, a home it in. looks like, man! It looks I, like you. Are you sitting in front of a long hallway or something? This is my uh, piano room over there. I'm in my dining room right here. Beautiful. We're coming Bad. to stay there. I know. I'm it's, serious. It's not tenor money, but you know, I do work. So. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Not lately, hear though. You. None of us are working lately. Yeah. 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 Which brings brings us to our next question. What have you been doing? You know, man, it's been a. Uh, well, I've been reading emails for cancel contract after cancel contract after cancel contract. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I'm the artistic advisor for Cincinnati and Atlanta Opera. So I've been doing some of that kind of stuff, uh, putting out fires. Is that why I've never worked at those companies? <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, you won't. <laughs> oh. Damn. Thank no, you. No, Thank you for man. having you as our guest today. Uh, <laughs> or... No, dude, I, you know, I don't have that kind of power, but... Uh, I've been working with those guys, putting out a lot of fires, you know, with all the racial stuff that's happening in the world. Everyone wants to make the right statement. I'm the resident black guy, so I have to answer all these things. Um, I'm back in school studying uh, diversity and inclusion, nonetheless, because I need to. Because if I'm going to be involved with these conversations, I think I need to bring more to the table than just my ethnicity and my life experiences. So uh, I got into Cornell University. I don't know how that happened, but wow. I got there. <laughs> and. Uh, and I'm, I'm hanging out at home with the family. My, my kid is just starting to play football. And if life had been continuing as we all know, know it to be, I'd be, I would have just opened Aida in Cincinnati this past weekend. So I would have been home for all his practices. So I'm at every practice with him, picking him up. We've been working out together and trying to work on this a little bit, you know. And, there you go. Uh, you know, does, he the, does he have the size of his dad? Dude, he's 6'2", 308. Oh. And he just turned 15. 15 Holy last God. week. You know He's what? 15? I, should get, I should get him with my boy. My boy is uh, six two, six three, about two two ten, two fifteen. So they we were born at the same time. Remember, aren't they about a year that's apart? That's right. That's right. We're, when, we're in Japan when together. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's crazy. I, how time flies. That's amazing. Yeah, how were the two of you in in a production together? Were you in the same production? No, I don't think we've ever been a production. Have we ever done a production together? No, we were. You were covering Leporello, and I was covering Commendatore. Commendatore. That's right. We've you done. You guys some, could do Aida some, together, right? The king so, and Amanazo. Yeah, we, we'd be fighting know. over who's saying Ramp is though. Yeah, okay. I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to stand next to Morris and have to sing. I mean that yeah. that I, that is the voice. Morris, how big? How tall are you, man? I'm about six three, man. I'm a big boy. And and, yeah. and about two eighty, two ninety. What? No, I'm I'm about another bill added to that. Yeah. Oh brother. <laughs> yeah. I'm the big dude. So you're over three, huh? Oh, definitely. Yeah, I've been over three since college. Yeah, I, we can all yeah. football. Great. Well, Morris, you played in college, right? So tell yeah, me yeah, about I played, that. Played, played fo football at the Citadel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Citadel. At Citadel. Yeah. Wow. And you didn't bring the weight down after the college days, though. All right. Most of those centers like right. lose what it. The hell like, is this? <laughs> Listen, you, know, you, you, Carl, I was, and I have nothing to talk about. I know. It's funny because yeah. 
most of these guys, you know, most of the guys that lose all that weight weren't going to be that big anyway. They ate it on. I'm, I'm going to be big no matter what, you know. Yeah, so, you know, you you know, know between the four of us, we're over a half a ton. Yeah, or, oh, yeah. or, or <laughs> Carl, Carl's three. I'm I'm about three hundred right now. I'm two nine. Hello, wait a minute. Yeah. What Carl's what? Aren't you over three still now? Maybe not. Hell I don't no, know. I've been. Yeah, but Carl's five nine. I know. Oh, I'm five eleven. I know. I'm six. I'm oh. five eleven. I'm six, <laughs> and I'm, I'm two ninety one. Yeah. You're six two. God, I'm the skinny mini 94. of the group now. You're a big dude. Did you play ball too, man? I played ball in high school and a little. Oh, yeah. Bit, you know. Where are you from? Virginia. Carl and I've known each other since we were 15, 17. Is that right? Yeah, so, from uh, yeah. Alexander, Virginia. For so sixty years, you've known each other. I get it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You know, you know, my first voice teacher was Todd Duncan down there. You remember Todd Duncan? I, I knew it. I was I went to his house, man, when I first started singing. Someone took me to his house and said, Go stay with this guy. And uh, it, he, he was he great. Was impressive. He's impressive. He was 92 you know, years old when I saw him. Yeah. And uh <laughs> he sat me down and he listened to me singing. Then he played this little tune. It says, Dubba dum bum, dubba dum bum bum bum. And I was, he's like, Do you know what that is? I was like, No, sir. And he's like, well, you better learn it because you're gonna make a lot of money seeing it. Exactly. Well, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you a question. With everything, I mean, I know that you and and you're really good friends with Larry Brownlee, yeah. who's for those of you out there, Larry Brownlee is one of the great tenors in the world as well. So when the two of them get together, it's like it's too much talent on one stage. But the yeah. two of you were were going around the country doing concerts together. No, that was the other bass, Eric Owens. No, oh, I thought it was no. I thought it was you no. and Larry you were going around. We have the wrong guy on the day. Thank you, ladies. No, not Larry Larry on the black base. You know the what? other black uh, base. The other black base. God. From your I studio. Thought the two, I thought it was the two of you going around. No, it was the other one. It was it was him and Eric. I was out singing in L.A. and San Fran and places, and they were making all this cash doing concerts. No, you know? I was going to ask you. I was going to say at a time like this because uh, I know that that was a a, a, a heavily African American composer um, yep. concert, and I was saying at a time like this, I think it would be wonderful to to be able to have that tour in the country. Well, you know, but, that kind of gets back to what was you're you're taking these ethnic classes, right? More hey, so where'd you, you guys go? You, know, it, it, you can't hear me. No, I can see you, but all I can see is you. Yeah, I can't uh, see the other. I got it on grid view, but it's only showing you. So in Carl, I didn't see Carl yet. It's only showing you. Me? Yeah. It's showing no, Frank. I'm sorry. I have no idea. Well, that's that's bad for everything. <laughs> that's bad for everybody. That's bad for you, Carl. <laughs> that's right. I hope all the listeners are all enjoying right. this. Can well, we, I have your attention. We, I'm, <laughs> no. Well, I'm going to ask. For, see if you can figure it out. I'm going to continue asking. But more they can things. certainly hear us. So let's keep talking because you know, Morris, I, I the fact that you're taking these ethnic classes really impresses me. That you're you're really <laughs> that kind of uh, responsible, kind of wanting to. To, to be more than just your own limited, you know, we all have our limited influences and our limited right. viewpoints, but to to uh, to take that so seriously, to to take that on at this age and in the middle of your career and in the middle of a, being a family man and everything, yeah. and I take it at our age, you know, that's uh, quite impressive. And, and thank uh, you, probably well, why you're so successful. Well, thank you, I appreciate it. The the, the logic behind it was I'm getting all these calls to go to these companies, and since I'm going to be on the front lines. I need to be able to speak intelligently about this team from an from an academic perspective, not just from a well. I was at a party once, and this racist guy said X, Y, and Z. That didn't fix anything, right? So mm-hmm. I need to be able to address this thing the right way. So I'm trying to make amends for it. You know? <laughs> yeah, I'm you just know, curious. I, I'm, I'm curious. Okay. Have you seen? Did you see the documentary Thirteenth on Netflix? No, didn't. It's it's an excellent documentary. I I highly recommend that. It. It's uh, basically it's it's about the Thirteenth Amendment. Um, and it, but it talks about how um, we've we've basically gone from slavery to mm-hmm. mass incarceration as uh, uh, of African American and uh, men especially, and how really it's 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 not solving anything in our in our society. Mm-hmm. So well, I'm just wondering if you went through that in your class. It's a, it's on Netflix. It's a wonderful documentary. No, I've, I've been exposed to a lot of different things. Um, this is more. The classes that I'm taking, there are four courses you got to mm-hmm. take. Uh, and I just finished uh, um, recognizing unconscious bias. And now I'm in stereotypes and, and uh, inclusion, uh, diversity versus inclusion. There are two more courses. But, yeah, we're delving into more situational type of situ- things in, in the office place. And I'm just converting it over to the to the artistic world, you know, uh, 
it, it's a, it's an interesting take on things. You know, we we actually critiqued the the uh, the book White Fragility. I never read it, but I listened to a lot of people talk about what was in it and how it. Uh, you know, how it comes from a standpoint of one lady being an expertise in this type of subject matter, but she really didn't consult the other side. And, mm. you know, it's, just, it's a lot of different takes on things. And you learn how, you know, just with the Me Too movement, a lot of things that we've done in our business, you know, uh, uh, would not be acceptable in normal circumstances if we weren't so pre-programmed to believe that things are just as they are. So uh, I'm trying to, you know, trying to siphon through all this, all this information and hopefully come up with a pr presentation so I can go to the opera companies and say, hey, since we ain't doing anything right now, let me come in here and teach you guys about this, you know. So maybe that's a you know, thing I'm going to do. I don't know yet, but yeah. No more cool. so you, you, what do you think about this, uh, the new alliance? Because I know several of my African-American opera singers have joined, have created this alliance for uh, opera singers, blacks in the world of opera. And against, you know, have you heard about that? I can't remember the acronym they have it, but it's. Yeah, like, I, I know about B.O.W. Black Opera. Yeah. Yes, Black Opera. That's right. Yeah, I, I know about that group. Um, It was actually started by that's Russell right. and, and, uh, and uh, Kenny Overton. And uh, but none of the big names are in it because it's a bunch of young kids that I know of for the most part, just kind of doing this type of thing. And while they're doing that, you know, some of us old cats are out there making phone calls and emails and getting things done. Uh, just recently, the Richard Tucker thing, you know, we jumped on top right. of that immediately. Yeah, that and was that. I read that online and I was. Yeah. I, I well, BOA, BOA wrote a letter that morning. But by then I had already talked to the, the time. You know, it already happened. You know, it was a done deal. But, you know, those are the types of things. And that was just on social media. But I'm in the middle of an investigation right now where. I had an incident at a party, you know, and you guys always have these party conversations. So, you know, mm -hmm. things come on people's mouth and start drinking. But, you know, Russell and I were standing there together. And this this old patron from a, from a company that I worked for has walked up to us and said, hey, we were looking over the Ohio River. And he said, you see that bridge right there? Years ago, you boys wouldn't be able to cross that bridge. And if you oh, did, they come over there and bring you back. And we're like, so we're singing Trovatore. You see two black guys. And the first thing you think of is. Let me remind you when you were slaves, you know, so yeah. we, got, we got a lot of stuff to work through. You, you know, know, that's like just uneducated ignorance on a person. Oh, just not, can I can tell you, just not it's, being aware but, of what to say. Yeah. Exactly. You know, people say stupid shit all the time. I, I, I'll tell you a quick story. Carl and I were with his with his gorgeous jewelry. We were doing a show in Occoquan, uh, Virginia, which, you know, is what, about 20, 30 miles south of of the of the city? Yeah, Where 30, is Carl? 30, 35 miles south. Yeah, about, 30 no, miles no, south. about 20 miles, 20 miles. 20 miles. I'm just going to show you how ignorant people are. So we're down there, and Carl's selling a ring, I think, to the, to this guy's wife. And so I'm stuck talking to the guy. And, you know, the conversation's going on, and, and he, he points to, to, the, to the, the booth across from us. And it was somebody who was doing, like, macrame or something. And, and they had a menorah, something like that. Carvings. Right? They had carvings, carvings. also. It was a carving. menorah or something. And he goes, look at that. He goes... Man, he goes, the Hebes, they love that shit. I have no idea. Yeah, uh, right Jewish. to Oren. Right to me. Right. <laughs> he like, ah, man, the Hebes, they love that shit. Well, okay, but wait a minute. Now, I got to tell you, <laughs> right I didn't you. hear that, but then he came back and he was buddying up with Oren. Uh, and it was <laughs> just, I mean. But you have to look ignorance. at this ridiculous ignorance. I mean, that's what it is. It's, it's ignorance. Right. Let me tell you something. At the beginning of my career, I was, the, the second show I did was Bohem. And I was down in, and I'll tell you where it was. Um, it was um, Fort Worth. And the big money guy at Fort Worth at the time, and he may still be there. And if he hears this, then he'll he'll know I'm the guy. But I was standing in the audience watching the Alcindoro Benoit come on stage. And he was a little light in the loafers. And I can say that because I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> but you're and, not light uh, loafers. <laughs> and uh and uh yeah, that's a nice. Lot lighter that's than nice. you every day, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and uh and Bill Walker, Bill Walker was the the head of the company and he comes over and he goes, "Carl, look, I know that you uh I know that you kind of kind of play on the same team." I said, "Yeah." And he goes, "Is there any way you could have a talk with this boy?" <laughs> and I said, uh, yeah, I'll see what I can do. And then right at that time, this other gentleman walked up in a cowboy hat, cowboy boots, dressed to the nines, long hair. And he said, uh, he said, Bill, who in the hell is, who in the hell is that damn faggot on stage? <laughs> Just like that. And, uh, 
and Bill trying to cover things up just turns <laughs> and goes, uh, uh, and um, he's he's the uh, singer, and he goes, "Well, somebody needs to fix him." Oh, and I and I looked over, and I I just you know look, I a week a week earlier I was driving a truck, so I looked yeah, over right. and I said, <laughs> I said, uh, I said, you don't, uh, I said, you think he's the only homosexual in opera? And he goes, <laughs> and he said, uh, well, I know we haven't had many of them here, and I said, well, you have two of them here right now. Wow. Wow. And he looked over at him and he goes, well, it, I don't see any other homosexuals up there. <laughs> and I looked at him right in the face and Bill goes, you better back up. Oh, wow. says, that to, says that to him. Yeah. And he just walked off and he never came to any more of the rehearsals or anything like that. But, you Who know, there's some, there's some dumbass people. Was he on the board? Just, just dumbass people. They're and he board. just, let me ask, absolutely. Let me, let he me just thought I was going to, he thought I was going to be a good old boy about this. Yeah. Right. Morris, Morris, you got, you have so many more years of, of entertaining people. I mean, that your voice is going to go till God, who knows how long. Yeah, I, mean. I mean, yeah, yeah. bassists can sing but, into their 70s. So you got about 10 years, thing. right? I cannot think of anybody, Money. anybody better of, of, for diversity of color to be in administration. And I, I, I wonder if, because I can't think of one other, is there a general director out there that I'm, I'm not thinking of who is, who is black? Uh, in Michigan Opera Theater, uh, there's one gentleman that's a G GM. Other than that, we have no artistic managers, directors. That's what I'm uh, saying. Yeah. It's crazy. Uh, I mean, it's uh, crazy. And, and you know, I know, and, and I've seen it. You've seen it at theaters. You know, I think there is definitely a, a desire to bring in a more diverse audience, and yeah. I, you know, and I think that I see general directors trying and 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 trying to, through the years, kind of anointing the latest Aida or the latest, mm. you know, you know, the next so and so, and no one's lean, lived up to Leontine and and people like that. But but I I'm just shocked that because I think there's definitely. A, a desire to to diversify, but they're just not doing it, and I don't understand why. Yeah, well, you know, Rod Dixon told me something once. It made a lot of sense. He he's said, "My best one, of my dear friends." Yeah, he's a smart dude. He, really he said, good. "Morris, you know the problem with the opera is if you go up on the Upper East Side and you look at the cars that the people drive that contribute to the Met, etc., they don't drive Fords and Chevrolets. They drive yeah. foreign vehicles because they like their." He says they like the opera served up the same way. You know, they like the exoticism of it. They're not going to trust it in the hands of a good old boy from America. And if he is, he definitely going to be a brother from the South. So we have to purge a lot of mentalities and, and earn. You know, we shouldn't have to earn. But I think that we have to show that we have the ability. If we can run IBM, we can definitely run the opera company. Absolutely. You know? mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I'm trying to align myself with the credit such that, you know, when I'm done singing, and hopefully when I'm done singing, I ain't got to do nothing else. But you know, I can start moving my way over into either administration or academia. I, that's kind of a goal of mine. Mm -hmm. uh, it just seems as though now if we got we, we got a whole year off, so that saves our voices for another year. And you and I are bases. We got at least 15 more years in the game on stage if we, if we do yeah, it right. So, got, yeah. Like I said, you can sing yeah. into your 70s, so you have about 10 more years at least. I'm 51, <laughs> man. So I got <laughs> young man, <laughs> young man. Years, jerk. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I had a, I had a, I'm not going to say it was, but I had a, a, a a general director one time say, um, you know, I, I was saying something about getting out in the community or whatever and, and helping mm -hmm. promote the opera. And he said, you think the problem is, he goes, you don't think we have enough. He goes, we have plenty of Jews coming to the opera. <laughs> opera. He goes, that's not the issue. Yeah, it's not the issue. <laughs> he goes, he was like, that's, we, we're, we're definitely not hurting for that, for that crowd. So, right, right. Um, so, I mean, I, I'm so glad you're, I mean, if with Atlanta and Cincinnati, I mean, they're lucky to have you. Yeah. I know the people who, who you're working with at both companies and and they couldn't yeah. be you know they couldn't have a better situation with that and i think you will be the voice of 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 you know of diversity you can say in the, in it. black opera you can say it <laughs> no you know it's it's hard because because i'm no. you know, look we're all liberal we're all but it's it's i think as a as a white man sort of. um Sort of. I think we have to sort <laughs> well liberal. Two, two and a half of us. But I think as a white man, I mean, I think that a lot of the change has to come from us as well. I think we have a, a yeah. major role to play in this. So, yeah. And, yeah. and I think sometimes we are afraid to say something. God forbid it comes out the wrong way. I mean, yeah. I'm, I, I, that's I'm going to be honest about that. So you I know, I don't know if you guys are having trouble. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Now I all I can see is Oren. A few minutes ago, all I could see well, was Frank. You're lucky. <laughs> no, I, can you, I, can I you guys see me at all? 
whoever's talking, I see now. Oh, okay. Oh, so you... Yeah, it's up for me. Yeah. How do you? So do Morris, that? how's how's how's, how's, how's well, family life now that you? Get, I mean, you've dude. been on the road. I know what it's like. You're on the road, and suddenly you got to. The hardest adjustment is getting back into the family, the swing of things, and now you've been there a long time. Dude, I'm still okay. So I was doing Porgy and Bess in Atlanta. In, in January and February anyway. I got back from Europe and I was here. Mm -hmm. And then I went to Dallas for like three days and they sent me back home. So I've been home all year pretty much. And wow. it's been a it's been a horrendous adjustment for them. You know, I'm just wanting to fit in. You know, I'm like, you know, trying to find exactly. my way and it just doesn't work out that well. You know, uh, Miles's mom and he have a whole system in place. And anytime I come around, I infiltrate the system and I don't know what I'm doing and I do this the wrong way. So it's uh that's been cool, but being around, you know, there's always a project to do around the house that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. There's always, you know, something that's broken that you want to fix and repair. But now it's like I got to watch the budget because I can't like replace the deck like I was gonna do or, you know, that kind of thing. So uh, I got I got my boat back up and running, restored, and I uh, I've been going out on it every weekend. And... How big is your boat? Well, I don't want to talk about that on here, but I. I got a twenty four foot pontoon. It's pretty cool. Oh, That's very nice. cool. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. yeah. I got it. Re I just got it redone. So, yeah. God, I got to move out of New York. He's living the life. I, I know. We all could have. Well, you know, it's my dad's old boat. Okay. okay. And I uh, bought it from him and I got it refixed. So, there you go. The hell, my oh, dad doesn't have a boat. Man. What is it? I mean, I think uh, the Jewish guys don't, don't go on boats. I mean, what's that about? <laughs> yeah. Man, that is beautiful. Look oh, at that. That's you a boat. fun family boat, man. Yeah. That's Who a party that boat. That's, that's what you do, man. Do you fish a lot? I did this past weekend, man. We caught 15. I ate five of them last night. Caught uh, white bass and and, uh, and all that stuff. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. No, no, I yeah. decided. I decided once my kids go to go to college, I decided I'm gonna. I don't need. I don't need a residence anymore. I've I've been actually sending Carl pictures. Yeah, he's trying to talk me into on, buying a, 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 two million, a million dollar boat. I'm just gonna live oh on a boat for the rest of my life. That's it. And well, I'll, if I need to visit my kids, I'm just. I see. That's what I'm that. That's what I. That's Wakanda. What I so when yeah, are we coming right. down? Yeah, Wakanda this is not a million dollars. It, you can buy a million of those for a million dollars. I bought mine from a doc, from my dad for from my dad for a dollar. So there you go. There you go. Oh. <laughs> Does he have yeah, another he one laying around? Dad, for a dollar? I, I, no, I was gonna say. I hope my dad's listening to this. <laughs> no, he bought it. The cool part, he bought it my junior in high school when I was sixteen years old. It sat around after I left him with the college for like. 25 years and got just ruined in the sun. I got it redone a few years ago. It got ruined again because I travel so much. So I'm home now. And we're both like, we're going to fix it right this time. We're going to keep it in the storage. So we did that. And uh, we were able to enjoy that. So I had my dad and my son out on it. So it's kind of, you know, three cycle. It, like it, it, three That's generations great. of Robinsons on board. My kid, he doesn't fish and he doesn't really care for the boat too much. But he was there. So that was cool. So just tell me like more. That, man, you know. How old is your dad? My dad's 75, man. Oh man, you're he's very young. Guy. He's young. Yeah, he's young. You have him. That's your yeah, lucky man. He's here. He gets on my nerves. Has girlfriends. The whole thing. He just <laughs> well, he's now it's his, it's his time to pay back. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you want to you had all these. You had all these amazing roles coming up. I know. I know the big one Ugh. was you were going to do your first King Philip. In Dallas, see, I know Morris's oh. schedule because bases we keep tabs on oh. each other's schedules. We so do. I know Morris had his first because you've sung Inquisitor many times, and he's your yeah. first fill up. Yeah. I know that's gotta hurt. It, are, hurt they, man. are they? I mean, look, I don't know if they, they're probably not announcing, but is is let's just say it doesn't have if it doesn't have to be Dallas, but are you going to be doing Philip in the future? Not that I know of. You know what's crazy? And you you probably know the guy I like him because it's a young base, David Lee. You know him? Yeah, yeah, I know the name, yeah. He was singing the fucking. Um, no, it's hey, right. you asked you asked me if we could if you could Fuck curse yes. on the show, and I said yes, absolutely. He was yeah, singing. I'm tired, the, I'm tired of this uppity bullshit you're pulling. Yeah, he was singing yourself. the fucking monk, right? Yeah. And now he's singing Filippo. What? Wait, what? wait, wait, wait! They're bringing it back, and he's doing it. He's doing it, man. Wait, wait, I mean, wait, God wait, bless wait. him. It's a tremendous opportunity for him. But I had to wait till I was 50 to get my first one. He's singing. Say, you know? I was gonna say, how wow. old is this kid? He's on way to the line. He's like 35, I think, man. If that, you know. He thinks he's like one of these Russian kids who do it in the, like the, when they're 20. Well, that's that's different. He's from here, but uh, apparently he has a long history on Broadway or something like that. He's he's a good singer. I know I like his voice. But yeah, I had that coming up. I got Zachariah at the Met, man. That's like I a know, big joint. But that's the one. In, so then the spring, that's still happening, right? I mean. Yeah, well, that's what happened. They moved the they moved the Don Carlo to the spring, and it was like I had to decide between Filippo and Zachariah at the Met. 
And my logic was, and you can attest to this, I said to my manager, I said, if I've seen Filippo in Dallas, everybody knows I can sing Filippo. Yep. If I've seen Zachary at the Met, everybody knows I can sing anything. So Exactly. You know, well, I mean, just, you've uh, done Zachary already many times. And, and I mean, that as far as I'm concerned, I think that's one of the hardest. That's, I got to think. Yeah. I mean, there are longer bass roles. Yeah, I've sung it. I, there are longer bass roles, but but that one, you know, just going two octaves and one aria and um, for the Italian you know, rep, this is the biggest one, man. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a it's a killer. I mean, you got three you know, arias, you got all them yeah. scenes and shit. Yeah, you and roll. I have to say, I think I'm just curious, which one do you think is the hardest aria of all of them? The hardest aria in Zachariah. I mean, they're all easy, so you know. So. Oh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but you know, the you F sharp, like Jerome Hines, right there. The, the, the F sharp at the end. Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the hardest one to get to because I sing F sharps all the time, but for some reason, that scale progression, da, 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 it's a little difficult. But uh, yeah. and uh, yeah. I'd like to hold it like Ramey, but I don't know if I can. You know, but everything else is pretty fine. Uh, what that, do you, you think? The two sulabro is too hard. Is oh, that hard? One? Yeah, stay in tune. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I, that's I hard too. You, I've done it in performances a couple of times, and I'm seeing the conductor in the pit like giving me the higher, <laughs> higher, <laughs> and I'm just you know have to tune that up because you can't hear anything. So yeah, they just give it. Da, 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 da. You hope you come in right. Yeah. yeah. But you know what I was going to say about that role? I was going to say you know because Gershwin said it has to be an all African American cast for Porgy and Bess. Yeah. I'm thinking, I'm thinking Uh-oh. Uh-oh. that Zachariah should only be sung by a Jewish guy. So <laughs> because yeah. because he's the high, you know, the high priest, the high rabbi, I think that that should be a it should be written in the score that only Jewish guys can sing that. So you, you know, need to get Sam, out Sam, Christian, Christian Van Horn, Sam Raimi, they all need to yeah. I mean Sam, I did it in the back of the past, but all of you guys need to stop singing that role. Is Van Horn singing that role? No. Oh, he has, I'm sure. He no, he just sang the aria at the Tucker. I don't think he's on the roll. Oh, he has a on the roll. Well, I mean, it, that's just a matter of time. But yeah, but you you told me he his problem. Friend, no, uh, yeah. he said if you don't have that note, don't sing Zachariah. He doesn't think he has it. So, well, you know, you know that's in that's in Act One. By the time I it's the it's the ones in Act. By the time the last one that I'm <laughs> those those yeah. low F sharps. I'm like I've been singing high I because I throw in high G's and stuff like that in the first aria and you suck. Um, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, but uh, so you had all that. So so the Zachariah hopefully is going to happen. We're all praying. Which is yeah. And when lost. would that be? When is that your first job back? No. Well, there's a Giovanni with LA Opera that's supposed to happen in January, or February, but we don't know if that's going to happen. So then the next thing would be Zachariah at the Met, which they said they're going forward with. I don't know. What's going to happen by March? I hope that we're up and running. You know, it'd be great. Uh, but we'll see. You know, I mean, I'm not. Look, man, all of us were hit. You know how we are. We make our money. We spend like we have it coming in because we plan our budgets. Right. And one thing you don't plan for is stopping work immediately and not having right. any income for a whole year. Absolutely. So that's, does. <laughs> yeah, you don't plan for that. I mean, the smart yeah. people do. They have money put up. I didn't have it that way. I got some, but. You know, more I, saw, I, saw, I this, saw. This is a big show. Line. Wait, before you say that, I'm gonna say this is a shout out to Congress. Get that. Yeah. I'm like that pandemic unemployment. Yo, that yes. $200, the two hundred dollar. The two hundred dollar bullshit is not. Yeah. I just want to say right now, we're, 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 we're not getting unemployment. Hurting, really hurting because we don't have a. We, we don't. Have a, there's no opera going on. So what do you want us to do? Yeah, yeah. Congress. Yo. Yeah. In fact, well, what they want you to do is they want you to go out and get another job doing something else. Yeah, we we went to school for this. This is all we know how to do, man. But I'm saying, like right. that's that 600 that everyone's getting is not going to be getting anymore because they're back at work. Toss it to yeah. us. We'll take 1,200 a week. Exactly. I, I'm not getting a 600 in New Jersey. We haven't. They they shut down. You haven't even gotten there. anything. I have haven't you? gotten anything. No 600. Oh nothing. no, nothing. It's terrible. Yeah. Now look, I was just what I was going to say is, I saw a meme the other day and it said at the at the bottom of the meme it said we don't get it and it showed a packed airplane flying from Newark to L.A. a week ago. Everybody, what? not even staggered, everybody wearing a mask. And it said, we don't get it. And then it had flipped, you know, it was a split screen and then it had an empty opera house. Wow. Here's the thing. There are empty opera houses all over the world, and I understand people are afraid to go back. But what happened to the idea that we'd go back 
singers, we would take half fee. We would take half fee to be singing again, for God's sakes. Morris is yeah, the orchestra. Know, the no, orchestra. No, <laughs> Morris is like, don't put me in that. <laughs> no, no, no. I think I no, think all I'll singers. Take half. Do no, I'm kidding. And look, kidding. take half. Yeah. I know you are. Take half fee. The orchestra takes half. Everybody is associated, affiliated with the opera house takes half fee, but we add a number of performances so that no one's losing really, no one's losing money, and we're still bringing in the audiences. But to com completely stay closed, you know, if you were to just completely lose your salary, which you have done for over a year, and then the and then the then the government says, well, we'll we'll throw. We'll throw six hundred dollars a week, or plus plus one hundred and forty-two dollars. My unemployment is one hundred and forty-two dollars a week, you know. And I'm sure you guys are getting comparable, except for Frank. They knew Frank was a multimillionaire, so they're not sending him any money. <laughs> that's why you're not getting on Frank. <laughs> yeah, right. No, it's because he's a member of Nambla. <laughs> oh, that's right. We brings us to our next uh, our next uh, sponsor, Nambla. Nambla. Nambla the <laughs> The National what's... American Man Boy Love Association. North America. North American <laughs> North Man Boy Love Association. Frank, Wait, Frank wanna... is the honorary president Wait, of the, before you go, the I wanna North, ask, Northeast I wanna, chapter. I, yeah. actually, I have not seen you. I don't know if I've – well, I must have seen you, but we probably didn't talk about this. But how was La Scala? Because you made your La Scala debut in Porgy and Bess, and I'm dying to know how that Italian audience was. Dude, you know, you. I think you and I may have talked about this. I never thought I was going to ever seen Porgy and Bess ever yeah. in my life. It was – Supposedly serious? too high. Yeah. Did because, you sing Porgy or well, Best? Uh, <laughs> I sang Porgy, and uh, I just never thought I would. Um, I was always told it was a bass baritone role, too high, too long, blah, 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 blah. And then La Scala asked you to do it, and it's like, oh, crap. Well, if I'm never going to justify having sung it, this is what to do. And uh, it fit like a glove. I mean, it was like, it Alvin fits Powell so well. Did it like crazy, right? Yeah. yeah. It What's that? Alvy Powell did it for years. It fit Alvy Powell did for years, yeah. And he's really more low bass as well. Alvy, yeah. you don't know Alvy Powell? Alvy, yeah, yeah. I tried to get him to help me learn it, but he was in seclusion. Now he's back out there. But uh, I went to Donny Ray Albert, and Donny Ray taught me every note. And John Donny Domain Ray. So, yeah, it, it it worked out great. When we got to La Scala, man, it was like. That's wonderful. The opening night crowd is a little bit less impressed. You know, they're kind of like, okay, they they enjoyed the singing. They I don't know if they really got it, but they were really, really receptive. We still got a standing ovation. And my colleague, Kristen Lewis, who had sung there before, says, you don't understand. The way they responded on opening night is a oh, big yeah. deal. I was going to say, did they, yell, that, did, they yell any, did they yell anything? Because I, I, I remember singing at Bologna and people yelling shit from the balcony at the conductor. And it was right before no. I was about to sing. It was Lucia. It was right before <clears> I was about <throat> to sing my aria. And I was the only non-Italian in the cast. And they, the guy came out and... The conductor came out and somebody screamed, Povero Donizetti. And I was like, Poor Donizetti. And I was oh, like, Oh, I was like, it was open. I was like, I can't go out and sing this now. Cause I'm like, <laughs> I'm, like I'm like, if they're yelling shit already. Yeah, they're hard asses there. <laughs> they are. So but they, could, they can't be hard ass with American opera, I don't think. They have no, well, the, they either like the, it or they don't, and they don't yeah, clap. The opening night was good. It has a lot of tunes they knew. I got plenty of nothing, summertime. So they like that. But after that, the crowds were going ape shit. I mean, they were going bananas. You know, we did seven performances. In ten days, believe it or not, and uh, wow. it went really well. So uh, they haven't asked me to sing it at the big house yet. I'm waiting for them to do so. So you uh, didn't? You wonderful. were you weren't in the cast that just did it? No, in fact, when they cast that show, man, I hadn't I hadn't even saw my first porgy. Like oh. no one, and you know, it's the funny part about this porgy deal is being an African American. Uh, and Frank mentioned this before. You know, you you didn't do it. The, being a, being black, you try to stay away from it as much as you can because you don't want to be typecast. Right. And for me, I'd sung everything in German and Italian for like 17 years almost before I did my first Porgy. So it was kind of the opposite effect. No one really thought that he could be a good Porgy because all he sings is the Rostro and Round Fist and Spot for Chile and, you know, that stuff. So yeah. it was actually a blessing in disguise. And when I came to it, I was able to, I felt <laughs> free it because I had already proven myself in the other stuff. So now I'm just going to go all the way black on y'all. There you like, go. You know, what really goes black. <laughs> How it really goes now. So I've done one, two, two fully safe productions now. The one I just did in Atlanta and Cincinnati, which is the same thing. And I'm waiting on the other guys to call and see what happens. You know, it's a good role for me. So yeah, it's a perfect yeah. fit. I mean, and, hey, and, and you're yeah. you're great for it. They need a great they need a great voice like yours. And I think so. I thank yeah. you. I appreciate it. But you got to have a none of this playing around with it anymore. Treat that shit like you would Zachariah. 
let me blow it and let's see how it really comes across. You Absolutely. Know? Did, you, did you feel that way about it's not a light role? I, no, yeah. but did you did you feel that way about Showboat as well? Because I know, did you feel like I need to stay away from that for a while? And because I, I mean, you first of all, you you killed it, and then I mean, there was no, as far as I'm concerned. You want to talk about typecasting, whatever. There's no other Joe that I would ever have but you. I well, mean, you. once you sang it, I was like, well, you could just retire the, <laughs> the, 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 well, the showboat from now on because nobody's going to be able to do it like Morris does it. You know, Sam Raimi said he wanted to sing that role and he wanted to sing Porky. But, you know, obviously. Of course. But, uh, yeah, 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 the showboat was the same deal, but it was – I was 13 years in my career then. So it was just – it was Old Man River, which I sing at every recital any damn way. So it was kind of like yeah. – it was a nice little setup. So – and – you know, it's hard to it's hard to like mess that up. You know, you're a big black guy, you're singing Old Man River, white people are gonna go crazy. So And you where know. did you first sing show? <laughs> I was so guilty singing that song, quite frankly. <laughs> did you really? <laughs> well, you gotta change you gotta change the lyrics, Frank. That's right. the thing. Yeah. Hey, Morris, there's, nothing, there's nothing more stupid than hearing white guys going, you know, uh, colored folks, colored folks yeah. and diss and dat and stuff like that. You sound like yeah. an idiot. But I never yeah. say those words either. Never did. Yeah, you say rich folk, it's, poor folk. Right. right. I got that's the white version. There's yeah. an old man called the Mississippi. That's the old man that I want to be. That's the Paul Robeson words. So yeah. we never yeah. The yeah, second Morris, verse I said color folks. Yeah. Morris, where did you first sing that role? Chicago lyric. And when he was it? He started that? small. He started small. He wanted to start small. <laughs> you know, so just, he, yeah. He wanted to try it out. I mean, sure. Let's try small. it out. So yeah, Chicago. Sure, I first sing, <laughs> but I've been singing Old Man River since I was, you know, since he and I were no, doing but I mean, but I mean the role. When when was yeah. that? When when did you do it at uh, That was Chicago Lyric uh 2012. But okay. eleven or twelve. But you know, the whole role is Old Man River. There's nothing else to it. You sing it right. six times. That's it, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I did that. And then it was after but that it was took, Houston. Took, yeah, I was gonna say you took it on the road and Houston everything. then Washington, then San Francisco. We did the DVD, then Dallas. Yeah, we, we made a circuit. Yeah. Damn it. I'm I'm Very saying, cool. where's Fiddler on the Roof? I need Fiddler on the Roof to be done yeah, everywhere. Yes, and look, I Tevia. I, I Tevia. Warren, I you are a, Tevia. I need to get into a, a, a thing of like a, a, a Tevias. That's it. That's it. Is that the Jewish role? That that's yes. the Jewish Tevia. That's the if father. I were a rich man, father. Absolutely. If I were a rich man. Do, 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 I think I look enough Jewish. Really I might give you. Is a this the little girl <laughs> I carried? Of the stories, right, Carl? Oh, we need a story what? from the road. Story yes. From the road. So we do a segment called Stories from the Road, where we ask our guests to tell a funny story, a funny mishap, a funny something that happened to them on the road. No holds barred. No holds barred. If so, if you, it's something you think. Oh God, I shouldn't tell. That's the one we want. Believe me, we've heard some doozies already. Something that happened on the road. And during a show, anything. During a, during show. a show, you walk into an X-rated in theater to watch I'll a, give you an example. You know. We had Latanya Moore on the show, and Latanya was uh -oh. talking about some guy pulling his scrotum out and oh, like yeah. showing <laughs> showing testicles on stage. So that yeah, you can go you can go with whatever you want. So yeah. tell us, was that true? Yeah. Did that happen more? No, <laughs> <laughs> you know. When I was at, when I so was, so did in you Indiana, actually do that? Yeah, did you actually do that? <laughs> it was my scrotum, yes. <laughs> it caused a blackout. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, speaking of Latanya, Latanya has been a part of some of my best stories, believe it or not. I believe um, really, I'm, I'm not yeah. surprised. She was something else, but she is. She's yeah, we, I, yeah, I probably shouldn't tell this, but I don't think anyone in the cast didn't know this. Um, there were a lot of things, but we went to Amsterdam. When I was in Vienna. We were in Amsterdam. She was singing Porgy and Bess. And this is the most embarrassing moment for me. She got through singing My Man's Gone Now, and she sang the shit out of it, as she does. And as soon as she got done, the last note, I went, Bravo! Loud as fuck in Amsterdam. But no one was even clapping. It was just me. Oh. And, yeah. And I was like, holy shit. And so Eric Owens was back there texting. He's like, who the fuck was that asshole that just screamed out bravo like that? Oh. And I was like, uh. I was like, it was me. He said, I thought it was you. <laughs> so that was one of those moments. And then let's see, Latonya and I had some moments when she was singing Aida with me in Cincinnati. Uh, we were about to go to Chicago and I had just bought my Hummer. So we were sitting in the, in the truck outside the bar. And uh, let's just say that the thing that Amsterdam is most known for was us Americans. We had partaken of that with us in it was, you know, we sit out in the Hummer and just like, you know, veg out and have fun. So I've had all kinds of crazy moments, man. Wait just, a minute. You had a Hummer in, in Amsterdam? In Amsterdam? No, 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 no. Yeah. I, 
I, the, the or things you got American, a Hummer in Amsterdam. No. <laughs> we were in Cincinnati, but you the stuff that we liked to participate in in Amsterdam was with us. Okay, got gotcha. well, you. Damn. <laughs> you brought it back. You just kind of made you spell it out. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Yeah, we had some fun with that. And <laughs> that Bravo was probably the most embarrassing moment ever. I can imagine. Oh, that was a time like, Larry and I were in uh we were in Napoli and we we're at a at like a pastry shop or something and they were like, you know, talking to us about what we were there for, and Larry told me we were opera singers, and you know, they want to, obviously they want to hear what you do. So I think I sing El Achirato Spirito and you know, in the restaurant and everyone's clapping and stuff, and we're leaving and Larry got almost out the door without singing anything. So he's standing in the doorway. He's saying, Una Fatir, wait, Una Fatir, the Lagi Ma. What's that? What is yeah. that? That's it. Elixir of Love. Yeah. Elixir, elixir, yeah. Elixir of love. yeah. yeah. He's Una saying that, Aria, you? halfway out the restaurant, halfway in the restaurant, people were stopping cars, stopping their, their Vespers. You can't hang out with like, tenor, man. Yeah. He went, they went a shit. And I was now like, when was that? This was 2010, I think. Wow. He was. It was, was one of those moments. Always go for always go first. If you were the tenor and you got to sing something, make yeah. sure you sing first. I because did. Carl I, and I had Carl and I. I told Carl we do concerts. I said, "Let me sing first because I'm not going yeah. after Nessun Dorma. I'm just I, not. I went, I went out to a restaurant in Baltimore when we were doing the Magic Flute. I went out with the tenor, and thank God he sang because then they gave us our meal for free. Oh, nice, 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 <laughs> nice. Now, one of you has music going on. Can you hear that in the music? In the no, background? that's my yard guy on the porch blowing off leaves or something. He'll be done in a second. Sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Is he a white you have guy? a yard guy? <laughs> oh, you, know what, dude? you know, Frank's my yard guy. I can't afford anybody. Frank does it free. Yeah, you know, I, he's, he's about to get the pink slip if we don't start turning things around here soon. <laughs> yeah. So let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. So your next job is back in January, if it happens in L.A. Then the next one is in February in, in February or March in, in uh, at the Met, you said? Yeah. Wow, well. And then is Cincinnati pushing everything from this season to next season? No, we're pushing everything from this season to 22. Okay. Really? Yeah. Well, I probably everything was done for 21. So, yeah. So that idea is this, still going to happen. Yeah, 22, though. Yeah. Okay. You asked me to see Scarpia, man. What would you do? Would you see Scarpia? Uh, that's a, that's a, a base? Notes? Yeah. That's you a have a, I mean, how, do you have good? Do you have a good? Uh, he has a great flat? F, 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 no, a flat. It's a it's a G, I think, or G it's, flat. It's a G, but it's a G. But I mean, but look, to sing a good G in public, your ass better have a good A flat. Well, I, I've never sung a G in public uh, that I'm proud of, at least, oh, and sorry. I wouldn't do it. So I don't know, but yeah, they're trying to put it together. But Cincinnati is going to do that whole twenty season in twenty two. So, you're, so. Asked, you're asked to do that, or just accept it? No, he asked me to jump in for for a for that and I wouldn't do it man. So, so who was your tenor that the, this Aida you just canceled or the kid was canceled? <laughs> who was your tenor? Hint hint. Oh, I think it was Marco Berti, I think. Oh good. No, he's done. So um, oh, no no my god. <laughs> wow. No, Mar Marco's a buddy of mine. Marco's a buddy of mine. He goes worldwide, Carl. Shit. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he's a buddy of mine. Far, I'll it? get him on here. We'll talk. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so, 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 you, so basically, I need to call Cincinnati and see if they're. Well, I mean, need a, you, need another I am an administrator, so I'll just. Hey, call hello. Just, hey, you know. <laughs> Although you owe me a ring, we so we we got to finish that up offline. <laughs> yeah, we we need to talk about that because it's I don't know. Good. Did we'll you talk. ever get one? We'll talk. Yeah. 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 I have good. There's gonna be some kind of back back room deal going on here. You know, always, gonna, next time I see Morris, he's got a big ass ring on, and the next time I, I, I call, he's gonna be like, "Guess what? I'm singing Rana Mason, Cincinnati. It's amazing." <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Oh, we froze you know, up. What happened? I don't know. You froze up. Yeah, you, there's a blur in here. There's a big blur going on. You froze. It's a nice picture of you, actually. But we can hear you, you. when that Morris. Morris, say some. Are you there? Hello. Hello. I'm back. Y'all here? Hey. Yeah. 
There yeah, you go. I mean, he'll be singing Rodney Mess, and I'll be having, I'll have two carrots of bling in each year. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's what we're saying. And, 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 and my, and my punk and I, ass will be, and my, right. and my punk ass will be in the front row watching the both of you. Right. <laughs> Ready to snitch. Bravo, bravo. I know how that happened. <laughs> exactly. Hey, so at this point, we ask you to push anything you want to push. Um, uh, tell us about anything you're working on, anything you want people to go see here. Uh, is there anything you'd like to uh, to put out there? No, I mean, I, you know, I just think that uh, we all need to do whatever we got to do to get ourselves back together um, and, and stay praying about it and stay healthy. Uh, if you're an artist, start singing so you can just get your chops back, keep your chops up. And that's about it, man. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm really trying to focus on this diversity and inclusion thing and try to yeah, make a difference with that. When are you done? When are you done with that? <laughs> uh, if I if I do it back to back to back to back to back, which I plan on doing, I'll be done by mid September. So you know, I I actually just just this week just got my finals and I got again sitting around doing nothing. I got my um, certification in real estate investment through NYU. So you did so, get uh, it Good for you, well, man. Yeah. I, haven't, hey. I, haven't my, I haven't got my final two grades yet. My teachers might hear this and go, "Well, fuck him. He's not. He's not passing." <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but I, I mean, you know, I, I was bored. I was like, well, I got to figure something out, you know, we're yeah. around doing enough. Hey, so Morris. I don't know what, I don't know if that's going to do it. Yours is going to do a lot more than mine is going to do, but, uh, but I hear well, you. Congratulations. You can make money immediately on yours, man. Congratulations. That's yeah, awesome. We'll see. We'll see. Hey, Morris, yeah. I, I tell you, I, I, I really am so impressed having met you. These guys have known you better and, and for yeah. a long time, but, um, I've been thinking, and I'm going to just put this out there for you because you know, we all, you know, racism is, uh, is discrimination based on race, but yeah. we all have experienced some degree of discrimination, whether you're gay or you're Italian or, or African American or Asian. Mm -hmm. Discrimination happens, and it's not it's not an exclusivity to some particular race, right. and and so I think we need to almost disband the special interest groups that have labels on them and say we need an inclusionary party. That yeah, it dresses yeah. a lot, you know. Yeah. And if you're taking a class in that, you want to be the start that you got my vote. I think we yeah. have to have an And I got to tell you, Frank knows. Part. Frank knows personally about discrimination because he's. They always think he's Ron Jeremy, <laughs> the porn actor. I say when yeah. he has the mustache, a mustache, he looks exactly off. like Ron Jeremy. Until he pulls it out, huh? Oh, <laughs> oh damn. Until he you know pulls what? it I'm out. I'm voting that that Morris becomes a permanent part of the show. I love that. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes. I think perfect. I think we should hey. start with our inclusion right here. <laughs> I'm gonna always say the wrong thing, so <laughs> I love it. We're three fat white guys. I like we, right, man. You know, nice to meet you, brother. Nice to meet you, man. You too, man. Hey, well, yeah. look, don't go anywhere yet, because I wanna I wanna I wanna I need to read an email that we got. We got an uh -oh. email. Um, at this, yeah. at, we, we like to say, you know, tell our, uh, I'm looking at I'm trying to find the email as we talk, but, um, at this point in the show, we tell people to, uh, if you, if you'd like to ask any of us questions, if you want to ask Morris, any questions, please email us at opera with fries at gmail.com comment on our show. As long as it's positive, we'll read the comments and uh, emails online. Be, if it it's negative, negative um, yeah, we, yeah, and, and Morris is big enough and, and I'm big enough. We'll get together and we'll track you down. Um, but <laughs> let, let me uh, let me just find this one picture I want to show you. Uh oh, no, yeah. that's my that's my and that's my your picture uh, of Ron Jeremy. My <laughs> yes, I want to show you the picture of Ron Jeremy, but but Frank is Ron Jeremy, but I can't find it. Yeah, but I'm trying to get back down to 220. Quite frankly, it's. Uh... I'm now almost, I'm close to the 60 then, and it's not coming off right. quite as easy. Do you have, yeah. do you have an email, yeah. Carl? Do you have any emails? Um, yes, I do. Here, let me read this email to you. So this is from Andrew Etherington. Etherington it says, hello, Oren, Frank, and Carl. Love the podcast, guys, and I love hearing the stories from the road and antics. May I propose a new section to your podcast? unsolicited advice from a chorister <laughs> so, <in quotes. laughs> now i say this from a place of love i have a professional i am a professional chorister with multiple opera houses and know firsthand that there are amazing talented artists in every opera chorus in addition some of these artists pride themselves on their knowledge of various opera subjects including technique singers of the past their own experiences 
and love to hear themselves talk. Can you share a particular moment <laughs> honest. where you were trapped in a conversation <laughs> with a chorister and thought, am I really getting singing advice from a course. right now from this guy right now <laughs> or if that is too negative any great interesting chorister interactions you've had over the years would be great to hear all right i have one wait a minute I, i've had great oh, i've had the yes. great i've had the honor of sharing the stage with you carl and oren <clears throat> and thank you guys are top notch frank hope we're able to do that at some point in the future. If you need more questions, I'd be happy to contribute. Keep up the great work, guys. Andrew, Seattle, Washington. Cool. Thanks, Andrew. I, I yes, have. Thank you. I have, why don't we? Have, why don't we ask our guest if he has anybody? Okay, yeah. And then we'll. Yeah, go that's go first for and foremost. Any chorus stories or advice? Any chorus, Any advice? Did you ever have a chorus or come up to you and say, "Okay, hey, you need to uh, you need to cover here. You need to lift this." No, I've not had that happen. Uh, I think, first of all, I'm 6'3", you know, three bills plus. Not too many people are going to come with me and say, hey, you're doing this wrong. So um, <laughs> I've had choruses coming to me and suggest me doing other things. Like, have you ever thought about doing this? Have you ever thought about doing that? And I've also had, and I respect this, I respect everybody. I think, you know, one thing, I'm a team player. Just because I'm carrying the rock does not mean I'm the star of the team. Like, yeah, right. We right. all have a job to do. So I, I know it's usually the tenor. Well, yeah. Going. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, re I respect everybody. So I've had choruses come to me and, and ask me if it's okay with this or are, are they in the way for this? And I always tell them, do what you need to do. I'll work around you, you know, or unless it's something that I can't work around. So I do collaborate with them in that regard. I think it's very important to make everyone feel as though they're all equal players. And just because I have this role, you have this role, doesn't mean I'm any more, more important. So I've had that kind of interaction with choruses all the time. So. Yeah, you ever sung cool. in a chorus there, Morris? Uh, not in the opera. I sang in a chorus with the Washington uh, uh, Choral Art Society. That's how I got started back in the music. I was in a chorus. What year was hey, that? Hey, Orrin, Orrin, are you still with us? 92. Yeah, I'm, here. I'm here. Okay, no, your picture's gone. Washington, D.C.? No, I'm sorry, 90, 95. Washington, D.C. Norman Scribner, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was uh, in the Air Force singing sergeants in Washington, D.C. So, That's how you know uh, Alvy. Well, yeah, and I and I made my debut in opera in '91 at the Kennedy Center, so that's wow. where my background started. But uh, wow. yeah, I know those guys pretty well. Bobby Black, um, you know, you mentioned uh, Robert. You mentioned Dixon, right? Yeah. His his uncle, Robert Black, was my chief in the Air Force and became my manager. He managed the three Motenners. Is that right? Yeah. How about that, man? <laughs> It's right, such a so small Warren, world. It's Warren, you were going to say small. something about. Uh... So I was going to tell. Well, I was going to tell a story, but first of all, I was going to say about the, about choristers, and, and I, I just want to reiterate what, what what Morris said. First of all, I think when you're up there, I, I would I would always want to be surrounded by choristers. I, I, there's nothing better than that. Um, I, I want them to touch me. I want them to be interactive with me. I, I it calms me down. It makes me feel like. Like I'm part of a uh, part of a bigger team, part of a bigger thing going on. Um, but my my stories have to do. I was singing uh, Romphis in uh, in Rome at the Baths of Caracalla, and um, it it was. I mean, it was the most disorganized thing I've ever seen. I mean, the fact that we actually put on got to put on a show was amazing. But I'll never forget. I'm standing there with the with the with all the chorus men, and they're talking shit about me in Italian. Of and course. they're saying stuff like they're like they're like you know they're saying in Italian they're like you know the guy we had last year was so much better, bro. And I was like, <laughs> oh my so I, God. I interrupt them and I go, guys, I speak Italian. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> so that was one thing. And then That's and funny. then then they set up a, a this being Rome, they set up a bar underneath the stage. So I'll never forget when I'm off stage trying to do you know the the Radames, Radames, all that stuff from the from the you know the the part where you're judging him Consecration all the chorus men that. around me they're all smoking drinking coffee and they were chopping watermelon mm -hmm. like i'm serious and i'm like guys could Judgment you shut the fuck up i'm trying to find my pitch i'm like hmm, hmm what other miss and they're like they're like hey get goes about and then they're just fucking smoking all around me and i'm like how fuck am i supposed to find my pitch it was the craziest shit so i mean that that's my that's my chorus story but i love you guys well, that was wow. well. Look, yeah, I think we all have. I mean, I have fond memories of all, all my chorus friends, and I, I really, I, I, 
I think when I at New York City Opera, I I think they were the nicest chorus members I've ever worked with. North, New York City Opera and San Diego, San Diego uh, Opera are two of the nicest chorus people I you know a uh, group of chorus members I've ever worked with. Um, they're supportive, um, but when you look up and you see the chorus there and they're excited because you're on stage, that just it makes the whole opera for hey, you know. Yeah, you listen, know? I, Carl. Perfect. I, I've sung in the chorus, so I'm not, I am, you know, preaching to the choir when I, but I auditioned for the Washington Opera Chorus when Ed Parenting called me and said, we heard your chorus audition, so we'd like you to consider for this role. But there are some great singers in the chorus. Yeah, you know, I was going to yeah. say, yeah. there was a, there was a, there was a <laughs> bohem, there was a bohem at the Met. Phenomenal singers in town. I, I did Bohem for, I don't know, like eight straight years. I did, I mean, I was Mr. Colina. Actually, I say that my house, that I, my first house I ever bought was the Casa di Colina because that's yeah. that's how I bought it with that with the funds from that. But I remember they would have, one of the chorus members would always, uh, they would audition and they would sing the role of Parpignol or somebody like that. And I'll never forget, this guy came out and I, I flat out, I was like, well, there's the best voice in the whole cast right there. I mean, it was the greatest Parpignol. I thought I was like, that guy needs to be singing Siegfried. I'm like, that shit is yeah. crazy. But they so. they like that steady paycheck because the chorus pays pretty damn well at the Met, and you know those guys are bringing home some pretty good money. You know, they were. <laughs> I don't know yeah, they that. were. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, just like us, they're in the same boat. So yeah. I want to uh, Andrew Andrew at Eth Etherington, I think it was. I think it is. Thank you. Andrew. Um, I uh, hope I'm saying that right. Thanks for that. Uh, Maybe that, we could uh, have Andrew you know, on as you know. And. Uh, <laughs> And uh, thanks for that. And uh, and yes, please email us any uh, comments or uh, you know any anything questions or whatever to opera with a side opera with fries at gmail.com. And I'm gonna by the time by the time this airs, we will already have our videos of our podcast up on um, opera with a side of fries, our YouTube channel, cool. which should should start this week. So this video will air in about a week or two, maybe. Um, so, yeah. And no editing. So you get to see Morris in all his glory. And yeah, they're going to see uh, this. Uh, uh, uh. They're going to see us when we go in Morris, and out. Morris. And we lose our video. <laughs> yeah. Morris, if any, if any lovely ladies want to get in touch with you, how, is, there, is there a way they can get in touch with you? Because they're going to, you know. <laughs> Are you Morris. single, Morris? Morris you You're single? trying to start. You guys are trying to start some shit. <laughs> no. <laughs> Happy married man. Morris, are you single now? Ball and chain, man. That's what I thought. Yeah. So you know what? I, I've changed the name of Carl Tanner Designs motto. It's now Carl Tanner Designs, and then it says for your wife and or girlfriend. There you go, Morris. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and why do you call my name out, Oren, when it comes to this? Uh, <laughs> Never the two shall meet. <laughs> Hey, you listen, you're a handsome man. What can I say? Yeah, really. I'm signing off now. Y'all kiss my ass. I'm done. Hey, <laughs> thank you for coming on our show. You, hey, you'll come on again if we want you, right? I will, man. I will. Hey, yeah. Thanks for joining us. Look, right. I'll send you a little. I'll send you a little, probably a little message about uh, yeah. when we're going to be on YouTube and uh, stuff like send that. Send me orange yeah. number two. Frank, nice to meet you, brother. Nice and uh, orange, I got to talk to you, man. All right. Uh, All right, bro. All right, call Take care. Care, bro. Thanks for joining All right. us. Bye, right, guys.